Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 and another part of this experiment where we take a look what would happen if you had the perfect player in Football Manager. Now last time we left off he had gone back to non-league football with FC United. He had managed to raise them up from the Vanarama North to the Sky Bet League 2 and today now that he's 32 years old, we are going to go right to the end of his career. I think he's got about eight years left. And we're going to see how far he managed to take FC United. Did they get in the Premier League? Did they manage to somehow win the Premier League? Um, and has he started playing for England again over the age of 32? Because he hasn't been playing while he's been down in non-league. So a few interesting things to look at there. We'll also see if he wants to become a manager it's not clear at the moment. He has no long-term plans. He doesn't have any coaching badges at the moment, so that will be the big question. Does he get the Continental Pro license that he needs, or does he only sort of get the National B license? Because having one or the other is going to make a big difference on whether he becomes a proper manager or not. And unfortunately, it's something I cannot change using the in-game editor. This does not have an option for that. It can only be done with the full game editor, which can't be used halfway through a save. So if you are enjoying this experiment, do drop a like on the video. Make sure you sub subscribe to the channel as well. It's worth letting you know I do have a horrible co cold at the moment which makes it difficult to talk and is why there wasn't a video yesterday. So do excuse me if there's a lot of jump cuts. It's me cutting out sniffing so that you don't have to hear it. Um, now let's go forward right to the end of his career and see how he's getting on. Well, we are now eight years into the future. The year is 2042. And as you can see, their campaign in Skybet League 2 got off to a really good start. He did score a hat-trick over Woking um, and then against Gunthorpe he got another one. Uh, he scored two against Leighton Orient, his former team, as they won 4-3 there. Knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Wigan on penalties, though, so a decent showing there. Their general league form looking really good going through the years. He's getting loads of hat-tricks, 3-0 over Blackpool. Um, defeat in the Checker Trade Trophy and a defeat to Stevenage as well before he came back with even more goals. And a really, really good run of form here. Um, across all competitions, another hat-trick here inside 20 minutes. Beaten by Halifax in the Checker Trade Trophy, and they did beat Eastley 4-1 in the FA Cup, but were beaten by Bournemouth 3-0, so a bit of a way to go there. Um, lots of victories along the way, though, and it looks like they went up directly. There was no playoff, and there's no way they've missed out on the playoffs with a season like that. So he's managed to get them promoted all the way up into League One, and this is, they aren't spending money. They don't have any money to spend, really. If we go back and look at this 34-35 season and the league table, uh, oh, it must have been the year before, uh, they did win the league 93.6 points clear. I feel like I might have shown you that last episode, actually. Um, but the following year, into League One, a 3-1 victory there over Swindon, 2-1 over Derby as well. Beat Blackpool in the Carabao Cup, a hat-trick there, before being beaten by Watford. Three defeats on the bounce there, so a more difficult season on the face of it at the moment. But loads and loads of victories coming in, including the Checker Trade Trophy, where they did get through to the second round for once, uh, into the third round of the FA Cup. Beat Oldham in the second round of the Checker Trade Trophy. Were beaten by Fulham, though, in the FA Cup third round. Through to the third round and through in the quarterfinals, beating Leicester's under-23s on penalties. Uh, they did lose to Man City's under-23s, so always going to be a difficult side there in the semi-final. But it looks like, again, they have managed to go up straight away for another season, and they are not spending money. This is just having one incredible striker up top. And as you can see, second place, five points off the title. They only just made it up above Bolton on goal difference, otherwise they would have been in the playoffs, and that would have been a whole different challenge. But they have managed to make it up through into the championship. These are consecutive promotions all the way up. Now this is going to be a lot, lot tougher. They did win their first game 3-2. He scored in his first two games, beaten by Cardiff in the Carabao Cup though. Uh, and then they lost a couple of league games in a row, including 4-1 to Bolton. Um, but then they managed to get a few wins together. Pretty inconsistent throughout the season. He is getting an awful lot of goals along the way though. And then they had a really good patch of form here. He is scoring a lot of goals. Beat Crawley in the FA Cup third round but beaten by Watford in the fourth round and then through the championship they did make it to the playoffs but unfortunately beaten 2-1 at home by Cardiff and 2-1 away by Cardiff. Charlie Hayes with 
uh, three goals across those games. Giancarlo Jr. did get a couple. He scored in both matches, but the rest of the team couldn't help him. And the consecutive promotions have ended there. Now, we've still got five years of his playing career to go. And you can see, again, this championship season, nice little run of games here. Knocked out on penalties by Man City. They nearly knocked Man City out of the Carabao Cup after beating Leeds earlier in the competition. Beat Swindon in the FA Cup, but then were beaten by Aston Villa. Their league form pretty patchy, and they did not make it to the playoffs that year. Now, the following year, again, we're going to run through this quite quickly. You can see their start was very good. A uh, hat-trick in that game, two in that game, and a hat-trick in that game. He always likes to start the season firing. That's eight goals in three matches. Um, and he carried on scoring in every single game, actually. Um, until this one here. So he scored in every match in August at the start of the season before dropping off a little bit. A load of defeats here will not have helped them. They did make it through against Ipswich and Cardiff in the FA Cup into the fifth round for the first time, but beaten 2-0 by Arsenal. Um, and again, these poor defeats here at the end of the season have cost them. They only won four games in the last three months or so. Um, and that's not good enough if you're going to make the playoffs. A lot of victories at the start of this season. Um, he's scoring more goals. Their team will be strengthening as they go forward. They're doing well in the Carabao Cup before being knocked out by West Brom in the fourth round. Out by Sunderland in the third round. But their form in the championship, fantastic at this point. A lot of victories um, right at the end of the season as well. And they did get through. They drew 2-2 with Blackburn away. Jane Caldo Jr. with both goals. And then they won 2-1 without him scoring in the home leg. And in the final of the playoffs, they were beaten on penalties by Swansea he scored the 81st minute goal when they were down to 10 men to give them the lead but then in the 89th minute Swansea got the equaliser and then won on penalties bearing in mind they were playing 10 men if he hadn't been sent off there you'd think they would have gone up he did score his penalty the first one but the following two players missed um, a good turnaround here but unfortunately Vincent Choppard missing the penalty Daryl Robinson got the winning penalty and sent them through so in the championship for yet another year, um, but they are still doing well. They're getting a lot of victories, a few defeats here, um, knocked out the Carabao Cup in the second round, but they're winning a lot of games, beaten by Watford in the FA Cup. So just focusing on the league at this point, and there is a lot of green there, and it looks like they have not made it into the playoffs, but there's too many wins there, so they've definitely been promoted I would say and if we go to the next year you can see they have been promoted into the Premier League um, they've made it all the way up to the top flight and Giancaldo Jr scoring on his return to the Premier League he's come back he's won the Champions League five times I think he's won leagues all around Europe and then he decides I want a new challenge I'm going to a non-league team and he single-handedly scores the goals and gets that team from the Vanarama North all the way up to the Premier League. And then he scores on his first game back as a 40-year-old man. That is some story. Now you can see they did lose a lot of games here. He's still scoring Premier League goals though. 3-2 um, defeat to Arsenal. He took an 89th minute winner for them to do that. He still scored a couple of goals there. Um, he scored at home against United. But again they were beaten. 2 all draw with Sheffield United. Um, and beaten in the Carabao Cup. Lost 2-0 at home against Liverpool. 3-1 win over Preston though. He scored a couple there. He scored away against Leicester in a victory. Um, he is still scoring goals, but unfortunately it's not enough. He got a hat-trick here to sink Bournemouth. He scored a hat-trick in seven minutes uh, to win that game for them away from home. 2 all draw with Chelsea. He scored the equaliser, uh, second equaliser in that game. But they're just not winning enough matches here. That's the takeaway message, really. Um, beaten by Man City as well. Draw with Spurs, 3-2 over uh, Brighton there. And he is scoring goals, quite a lot of goals actually, for a team who are definitely going to get relegated. Knocked out of the FA Cup in the fourth round after beating Brighton earlier. Uh, but a 3-2 win at Old Trafford, FC United. That would realise a huge lung dream there. I know that FC United... Um, supporters are Manchester United supporters but you have to say if the Glazers are still in charge of that club and you've brought them all the way up from non-league to the Premier League and then beaten them at Old Trafford in your first season in there there would be some sweet sweet victory there and Jen Caldo Jr the former City player scoring two goals to get them along the way and the winner in the 85th minute 
uh, in front of 91,000 United supporters. That would have been one hell of a game to be at, but a great result there, which kicked off a horrible run of defeats. Uh, he wasn't getting as many goals here, and that won't have helped them. Um, but this is a lot of defeats right up to the end of the season, actually. So it's safe to say they will have been relegated from the Premier League. Now, if we have a look um, here, then you can see relegated at the bottom, 21 points. Uh, there were eight points off safety, um, and that's not an ideal position to be in. Now, if we just go back um, and have a look at Giancaldo Jr., you will see that he is no longer at um, FC United. He has moved to West Bromwich Albion, and he moved if we look at his career stats, for £11 million. Now, his time at FC United makes up the bulk of his career, actually. He had, what, seven years at Man City, but he's gone and stayed at FC United for nine years. So a huge chunk of his career in the latter stages, to be honest. But he got 56 in 51 in his first season in the Vanarama North, 57 in 56 in the National League, 47 in 51 in League 2, 50 in 55, 44 and 51, 44, 52, 42 and 51, 44 and 54, and then in the championship in his final season, 42 and 42. This is a fantastic goal scoring record. Imagine getting over 40 league goals for nine years in a row. And then he gets to the Premier League and he gets 32 and 42 in all competitions, but 28 Premier League goals. He won the Golden Boot that year with FC United in their debut season in the Premier League, but unfortunately they were still relegated. Um, and then he moved to West Bromwich Albion, and you will have seen from the Premier League table, he took West Brom all the way to the Premier League title. A sensational performance. Now, West Brom have a great team. It isn't just him. They do have a tycoon owner, I think, at the moment. Pep is their manager. They've got Giancaldo Jr. in their team as well. But they have managed to go and win the Premier League title by quite some way as well. And when we look at their season, there were a lot of victories here. They lost their first game. He did score a couple of goals, but he is getting the majority of their goals in these games. Uh, they won that game against nine men. They were playing with nine men, and they still, despite a 2-1 lead, went down to 2-2, and it took until the 90th minute, minute to get the winner there. Uh, knocked FC United out of the uh, Carabao Cup, so... He didn't score against his former team at least, saved them a little bit there. Um, FA Cup and Carabao Cup knocked out of both, but their Premier League season was absolutely fantastic. They weren't even in Europe at the time, and yet they've managed to go and win the Premier League by such a huge margin. Everybody else doing really poorly in their points totals, it has to be said. But you can see in his final season as a player, he has won the Premier League Golden Boot and the Premier League title with West Bromwich Albion. Here are his managerial uh, background, showing that he is going to become a manager. Um, but if we just look at his milestones and his biography, then you can see, feel free to pause this if you want to go into more detail, but it's a very, very long career. He scored an awful lot of goals. Um, at Leighton Orient, he did win the National League, the FA Trophy. Um, he went to Man City, won four Club World Championships, four Champions League titles. Unfortunately, he never got another Champions League title. He won three European Super Cups, um, the FA Cup once, Carabao Cup, four Community Shields and four Premier League titles. He won everything with Manchester City. There is nothing he didn't win. After leaving them, he went to Spurs. He only got the Europa League there before going to PSG, where they did win the French League three times, the Trophy de Champion. Uh, the French Cup and the Coupe de la Ligue three times as well, but no European glory. Uh, his only European glory coming with Manchester City there. He did return to Manchester City, got a load more goals for them, won another couple of FA Cups, three more Carabao Cups, three more Community Shields and the Premier League uh, twice, but no more European competition before going to FC United and taking them all the way up to the Premier League and then winning the Premier League with West Bromwich Albion as well. It's a fantastic career that he's had. If we look at the uh, golden ball, if I can spell that correctly, uh, then you can see after this little hiatus where he was playing in non-league, he managed to come from the Vanarama National League with SC United without them spending any money. It has to be reiterated there. He managed to take them all the way up to the Premier League and then come back and win another golden ball at 38 years old that is just 
an incredible story. He also won it in his final season as a player with West Bromwich Albion as well. He's won the Golden Ball here with one, two, three, four, five teams, including two spells at Manchester City. That is some record. And he even just allowed other players to take the title for some time. Thiago won it uh, five times here. He must be some special player. He's 33 years old now, still worth 54 million. Uh, spent most of his career at Atletico Madrid after coming from his native Brazil. So he looks like he's a pretty good player. Now we do have to look at one more thing because you'll see these stats have gone up. He has been playing for England again and getting an awful lot of goals for them as well. So if we have a look at the England national side, I have no idea when he came back to them. He's not playing for them now. He did retire a little while ago. So there was a spell probably around this sort of point. We just need to look. You can see they won the International League final in 2035 against Germany. A 3-1 win there. Um, but then they kicked off European Championships. Uh, got into this. Giancaldo Jr. back in the side at this point. So when exactly did he come back? Uh, no goals here. There it is. This is his return against Gibraltar. He scores a hat-trick as they win 5-0. Next game he scores a couple more. His goal-scoring form for England continues. Um, he takes them to the European Championship as well. Gets a couple in his first game. Uh, one there as well. Two there. Another goal there. Um, and one against Ireland in the quarterfinals. They beat Portugal 5-2. He scores a hat-trick there to send them to the final, where they're beaten 5-4. They were 4-0 up in 33 minutes. And then in the second half, France go and score five goals, including a 90th-minute winner. Can you imagine being an England fan if that was real? You get to the European Championship final, you're 4-0 up at half-time, you're absolutely laughing. You've got the world's best player having scored a couple already. Surely going to get a hat-trick. Instead, you concede five goals and are beaten by a 90th minute winner for France. That is horrific. The worst choke you will ever have seen in international football. Um, now, they carry on their campaign, though. He's still playing for them at this point. International League, they managed to go through. He does score a winning a penalty in the winning shootout there over Italy. So he lifts another international league. A World Cup qualifying campaign uh, gets underway. He does play in another World Cup here. Scores two, five, eight goals before being beaten by Belgium in the third round there, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. Another international league campaign though, and he does win another international league. He's got a few of those in his locker now. European Championships, is he still playing at this point? He is still playing at this point. Um, he's not scoring a lot of goals, but you see he scored here against Ireland. He's definitely in this squad. Uh, they win 4-2 against Spain. 5-0, he scores a couple of goals over Switzerland in the semi-finals. And then 2-1, three players sent off in that game as they manage to win in extra time. And he gets to lift another European Championship with England. He retires shortly after that competition um, and doesn't score anymore. This Matthew Hopper guy, though, getting five goals there against Malta. Um, they lose in the final of the International League. They do win the Confederations Cup, though. Um, he's definitely not playing at this point, I don't think. Um, but they do win the Confederations Cup after that. Um, and then most recently, they are in the World Cup Group D. Um, I'm not really sure why I can't see how that campaign went. What on earth is that about? Oh, it's still ongoing, that's why. Where's the last opponent then? Or is there only two games there? Oh, the World Cup format has changed. That's why. But if we go and look at Jen Caldo Jr. once more, and for a final time really, uh, we can see, if we look at his biography with England, what did he manage to do with England? Uh, 210 appearances, 242 goals. Where are his England trophies though? That's the question. You can see a lot of individual honours here, but we can't see what he got up to for England which is a shame. If we look at his competitions, and then we're just looking for England, really. Uh, so you can see there were winners of the European Championship and the International League. Won that twice with England. Um, where else are the England victories? Here, there were runners-up in the International League. Uh, winners of the International League, so he's won three of those at this point. Um, winners of the Confederations Cup, so one of those. Runner-up in the International League again. Won the International League for a fifth time, is that? Um, and there it is, the World Cup in 2022. Um, also won the International League back here as well. 
And that's it. So he won absolutely everything with England. He won the World Cup in 2022. Unfortunately, they did not win another one after that. Um, but he did manage to win the European Championship finally later in his career. You can see here, England never really dominating after that. He really did peak early in his career. The victories in the Champions League, winning the World Cup late on. But this little renaissance where they did come back England and managed to finally win it after being a losing finalist for three of the last four competitions, they finally came and won it. And it was hosted in Scotland and Wales as well, so that's even better. Nearly a home tournament there. Winning it in Scotland would have been quite sweet as well. But they did finally win that European Championship. And it's been a fantastic end to his career, really. Bringing FC United up over his 10-year period to the... Premier League and then winning the Golden Boot and the Golden Ball that year. Um, but you can see he is now a manager. Unfortunately, he's only got a National B license, so he's not going to have a great career. I'd be surprised if he stayed at more than one club. But we are going to go forward next time through his entire managerial career. So there'll be one more part to this experiment where we look at his managerial career and what he manages to get up to. I'm going to make him a coach. Um, as well and an assistant manager so that he isn't limited to just being manager. Hopefully he will do his coaching license at some point but that's something that I can't change unless I became a manager, hired him as an assistant and then sent him on endless coaching courses but I can't be bothered to do that unfortunately. I'd rather do a dedicated perfect manager um, experiment and just let this career develop at least a little bit naturally here and see if he does get the Continental Pro license or anything else. But you can see that all of his stats are maxed out. Um, so if you do want to see that, make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this series as well. But until next time, see ya!